Let's take a look at how BIME connects to different data sources. To create a new data source, I'm going to click this button here, and I'll be presented with the data source builder. The first step of which is to select the data source you wish to connect to. We'll start by connecting to an Excel file. So I'll start by selecting the data source type and click next. Here I'm going to give a name to my data source and pick the source file. I can either drag the file into here or choose. When I do so, BIM will upload the file and then we'll need to select the sheet we want to connect to. When I click on next, BIM will split the fields out of your data source into attributes and measures based on the content of each of the fields. For anything with text values or qualitative data, they'll get put into attributes on the left hand side. Anything which contains numeric values will be put into measures on the right. BIM will also recognize any valid date formats and put them into a temporal dimension. If you'd like to modify the schema of your data, you can select fields and move them from right to left and vice versa. When you're happy with the schema of your data, we'll click on next and we'll be presented with the cloud storage options that BIME offers. The first option is Deja Vu, which can allow you to store files up to 200,000 rows. For anything above this level, we have BIMEDB available. We can launch an instance of BIMEDB to then push this Excel data into a table in our BIMEDB. Finally, for very large data files, we have BigQuery, where you can authenticate with Google to connect to your BigQuery account and push data into it. Here, we're going to select Deja Vu and Click Save. BIME will then start importing your data. When it's ready, we'll then be in the Query Builder where we can start building our first query. Now let's take a look at how BIME connects to Google Analytics. We'll start by selecting the Google Analytics native connector and click on Next. Once we've authenticated with Google, we'll be presented with all of the web property profiles that we have access to. BIME allows you to aggregate multiple profiles. You may notice that there is no schema or cloud storage steps in this particular connection because BIME already knows and has mapped the data source and we don't have access to the raw data to be able to store it anywhere else. All we would need to do now is click on save and the connection will be created and we'll end up in the query builder where we can start to build our first query. For BIME to connect to relational databases, you need to make sure that the database is read only accessible from this IP address. You'll also need these pieces of information, user, password, host address and port. Once we've selected the database, we'll then select the table we wish to connect to. There are three different ways to connect to relational databases. Firstly, we can connect to a single unique table. Otherwise, we can create a custom SQL query. Thirdly, we have the designer, which we can launch, where we can select different tables from within the database and create joins between them. We can add the condition, select the type of join. When we click OK, we'll see the custom SQL query that is generated. In this case, we're going to select a simple table and we'll go through the steps of organizing the schema and selecting cloud storage. Notice that the option none is now available 
as we can communicate with the database directly. You may have been wondering whilst we've been creating these data sources what the advanced options relate to. Essentially, they're there to boost the performance of your data sources by authorizing the caching of results of queries. What this means is that once you have executed a query, if you were to re-execute that same query within the time specified in your cache, BIM wouldn't go back to the data source to ask for the same results again, but would simply go and get them from the cache of the results.